All right, we are going to uh, wrap up this particular portion of the book, or uh, yeah, of the book itself, when we look at the cerebral cortex itself. And uh, the thing to keep in mind, and the thing that's important when we talk about the cerebral cortex, is the idea that uh, cortex itself, that word, you probably wonder where did that word come from, and cortex simply means bark. Um, and <clears throat> essentially what you're looking at uh, in this cross section here is uh, just up in these areas right here where that you see is color coded is what we refer to the cerebral cortex. Um, it's the outer surface of the brain and <clears throat> it is filled with uh, interconnected glial cells and that's uh, they're interconnected and um, they're neuron cells so this thin layer uh, is what we refer to as the cerebral cortex and uh, laid out they would probably be about the size of a large pizza uh, when we lay it out that way and flatten it all out. The, the convolutions in the, the surface of the cortex is such that allows, uh, allows it to be uh, actually crammed in, if you will, the cranium itself. So the actual structure, uh, the, the structure itself is divided up into uh, four lobes, which are pictured here. Um, and the first one, uh, which you see, uh, number one, is f the frontal lobe. And we'll talk about its function uh, in a minute, but the frontal lobe itself, as the name would suggest, is, is at the, the area in the front. Uh, I know it's, it's a confusing name, of course. So the frontal lobe uh, and it is right behind the forehead, then the parietal lobe, which runs along uh, the top of our head, and it contains in it um, a variety of interconnections, which we'll look at when we talk about the motor, motor cortex and the sensory cortex. The temporal lobes themselves, which is that area right up in here, that um, uh, lie on the side of the, um, near the ears, temporal, um, you probably are very familiar with the, the, the uh, um, area of your head that people often rub when they have a headache is the temples and the temporal lobe lies really right behind it. And then finally the last one is uh, the uh, uh, occipital lobes which are in the back uh, largely re responsible for uh, sight um, it's unlike other parts of our brain, like for temporal lobes, for example, the auditory uh, uh, aspects of it, the auditory nerves and auditory cortex lies right by the center in which it occurs. Uh, the, pr the frontal lobe is also the case. It oftentimes has executive functions, um, exec functions. The interesting thing about the occipital lobe is look at how far back it lies in, on the brain itself compared to what it's connected to in that vision. Um, I would suggest to you that, that uh, God designed us in such a way that uh, um, our vision is so vitally important that these lobes were placed in a place where they were the least likely to be affected. Um, and so they are placed a long way away. Um, there are a lot of people that would probably have a different explanation for why the occipital, occipital lobes ended up where they are, but at the same time, um, it is in an area that is highly protected. Um, <clears throat> it's not often that we get um, a, a, a rear damage uh, injury, if you will, uh, we're not often hit directly from from the 
back. Uh, if we're going to have any kind of injury, it's usually a frontal damage type of injury where we hit the front of our head. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that the other parts of the brain aren't affected by a frontal damage. Um, the, the thing to keep in mind here is that the brain itself uh, is suspended in a fluid uh, all outside of this area out here, it's suspended, which means that if you have a frontal um, attack or a frontal assault, the brain will lurch forward this way but in hitting the assault, but it'll also go back in this direction. Um, the, uh, and, and so it, it, we refer to that as a contra-coup injury. And <clears throat> uh, that's often the case in, in brain injury, is that if there's a frontal, it's called contra coup injury. And, and it's not uncommon uh, to see that when somebody is in a motorcycle accident or something like that where they hit the front of their head, and then there's, there is a, um, a cor corresponding injury in the back of their head uh, because of the brain moving forward and then by impact moving back as, again. All right, the other two areas that I want to focus on, well, not other two, I, we've looked at the bigger part of the brain in the lobes perspective. Now I want to focus in on some specific areas that are of interest. Now, before I do, <clears throat> on the last video, I realized that I, I hadn't spelled the uh, contra coup injury when somebody gets hit from behind, but it's uh, spelled this way, contra coup, E-O-U-P, contra coup. Um, let me back that. E so you can actually read it, and it, it refers to a type of injury that is kind of a front and back type injury uh, <clears throat> because of the movement in the brain inside of the uh, cranium itself. All right, we got that corrected. Now let's, uh, let's look at two specific uh, areas in the parietal lobe. Remember, that's the, the top most um, <clears throat> Uh, area of the brain itself. The first one uh, that is part of this is the motor cortex. And the motor cortex is primarily responsible <clears throat> for uh, output. And if you remember, when we talked about uh, uh, neurons that fire together, wire together, um, and so the motor cortex and the sensory cortex uh, this is the, the motor over here, and in the yellow is the sensory. Is that they're, they're literally um, right next to each other, and because of that, then they tend to wire together because they fire together. Uh, the, the sensory cortex brings information in, the motor cortex produces movement as a result of that. So the motor cortex uh, was, uh, the other uh, was uh, key, and two researchers by the name of uh, Forster and Penfield actually uh, mapped various areas of the brain that uh, were related to the motor cortex, uh, and they discovered that uh, where precise control was needed, and this is something we will see throughout, is that where precise control, I gotta write it a straight line here, Pre precise control leads to greater cortical area. Um, and, and to some degree it makes sense. I mean, when more and more brain power is needed to be precise, to be um, um, very um, specific in our movements, then presumably we need more um, area of the